hi everyone i'm sorry about last week you know we were suddenly plunged into darkness and so don't even know what was going on and then we discovered that the whole neighborhood was blacked out and so on but well we are back here today and so we uh, uh we'll continue from where we stop okay uh, so uh as uh, lynn has mentioned to, tonight we begin a whole new series on who is the ncc and uh, we're going to look at our core values and then we're also going to look at our mission and mission statements uh, in the few weeks to come so let me share my screen and then uh, we we'll we take, we'll take it on from there Okay, uh, just just a second. Okay, so uh, who is DNCC? As I say, we're going to look at core values. Mission, mission. Uh, we're going to look at our core values first. Uh, can any of you uh, remember what our core values are? Uh, maybe you want to shout it out to somebody next to you. Uh, you. You know it's CHIPS, but what is CHIPS? What does CHIPS stand for? Okay. Uh, okay, I'm gonna, just going to help you with this. So, um, chips. So, first, let's say together, uh, Christ-centered, H for honoring, I for impactful, P for passionate, and S for supernatural. And tonight, we're just going to focus on uh, Christ-centered first. Uh, so, the next few nights, uh, next few weeks, different people will be leading us through the different uh, core values and also the mission statement and vision statement. But you know, as I was looking at the core values and the whole topic of being Christ-centered, I realized that actually at the center of our core values, at the center of our core values is Christ. You know? uh, so for example, uh, what when we say honoring, is it has to begin with Christ being the center of it all. When we talk about being impactful, it has to do with Christ being the center, center of it all. Or if you're talking about being passionate, then Christ has to be in the center of it all. Or supernatural, then Christ has to be in the center of it all. Okay, so uh, maybe uh, that may help us to then uh, look at it a little bit differently. Okay. Now, uh, I want to begin with two concepts, and that will help us to understand what it means to be Christ centered. First of all, we need to understand that you know the scripture. Uh, in the New Testament, about I can't remember, but over a hundred times it's been mentioned in Christ, in Him, and uh, in the Lord, and so on. So uh, we need to understand what it means for us to be in Christ. Okay? And then the scripture also talks about us, uh, Christ being in us. Okay? And so this, these are the two things that we need to hold together. And as we begin to uh, uh, think about what it means for Christ to be the center of our lives. Okay? Um, so when we believe the gospel, when we trust in Jesus, he comes and dwells in us. But at the same time, he puts us in him. He incorporates us in him. Uh, so that, that these, two, these two things, we, uh, these two concepts, these two ideas or these two teachings, we must hold in tandem and intention. Okay? And understand that both are equally uh, true and both are equally important. Okay? So uh, there's a verse in scripture, uh, a passage in the Bible which uh, explains a bit about this verse. It says in first, uh, sorry, Colossians 1, 27 to 28, to them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery uh, to, 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 to the church, uh, the glorious mis uh, riches of this mystery. Notice it's the glorious riches, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. When Christ is in us, we have the hope of glory. And yet, he, he, Paul continues to say, he's the one we proclaim, Christ is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom, so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. So we may present everyone, even you take away the word fully mature, we may present everyone in Christ. So, uh, so uh, this, these are the two things So what, uh, that we need to hold together. So what does it mean for us to be in Christ? So instead of where we are, spiritually speaking, now we, have, we move into a new position in Christ. And the scripture tells us that if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, right? Huh? So because we are in Christ, we are members of his body. 
Some of us are the legs, some of us are the toes, some of us are the, you know, the, the, the eyes, and so on, the ears, and so on. You know? But Christ is the head of his body, okay? So we are all members of his body. And because we are in Christ, that you know, the body is one whole. So all that is Christ, all that belongs to Christ, all that is Christ are ours to share. We have a share in it. Amen? You're with me so far? Okay? So Christ in you. So Christ in us means Jesus is in us, changing us from inside out. You know, we are being changed from inside out. It's not something that we that's from outside, but he's in us, changing us from inside out. And our members, because he's in us, then our members, and he's part of us, then our members, our bodies are his. Okay, that's why Paul says, hey, don't you know you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? You don't do this sort of thing, you know, because the Holy Spirit is living in you. The Lord is li living in you. Amen? Okay, so, uh, yeah, then one more. Then all that is ours then belong to him. In this, you know, you, the flip side of it is all the, because we are in Christ, all that is Christ belongs to us. Or we have to share in it. So therefore, when he is in us, then all that is in, because we are one body, we are not, you know, we can all be separated. When he's in us, he's in every part of us. Okay, I know the picture that I put there show only in the middle, but it's actually in every part of us. Amen? So far, so good. Okay? Now, so the, we want to ask ourselves then, if I'm in Christ, then who am I in Christ? That, uh, okay, some preliminary observation. It's not conscious experience. We don't know, you know. We, we, we are not conscious of the fact that when he has incorporated us into him. It's not a second blessing that we must ask or something like that. But it's a, a grace of God working in us when we believe. When, when we believe, God works in, in us and puts us into Christ. And why do we need to understand this? We need to understand this so that we can know that, you know, the full extent of what it means to be in Christ so that we can have the full blessing and full benefits of what it means to be in Christ. Amen? And so when we talk about being in Christ, we share in two things that belong to Jesus. Uh, one is his person. Who is he? We share in who he is. If he's divine, we share in his divinity. You know, And also we share what has he done, his work. What has he done and what he continues to do in, in us and in the world. We also have a share in it. Amen? Okay, so um, let's look. First of all, we share in all that he is, his person. Huh? Uh, so as he is, so are we in this world. Okay, so as he is, so are we. So who is Jesus? First of all, he's the righteousness of God. He's he's he he's the righteous God. Huh? He has, he's the righteousness of God. And so the scriptures tells us that God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that we might become the righteousness of God. Amen. What a privilege. And then eternal life. He's he he. He lives eternally and therefore we also have life eternal. And the gift of God is eternal life in where? In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Eternal life can only be found in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And then he chose us. He's the chosen one and he chose us before the creation of the world. Chose us where? In him, before the creation of the world, to be holy and blameless in his sight. Okay. So we are also the chosen one. And what a privilege to be chosen by the Lord. And when he comes, uh, he appears in glory. And we will also, the scripture tells us, we will also appear with him in glory. Amen. So he's a glorious one. And because he's the glorious one and we share in his glory, we are also the glorious one. Amen. And this, this is something that we all know. But it's good to, to, to remind ourselves again. So in Christ Jesus, in who? In Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. So we are sons of God. Just as he is the son of God, we are sons of God. And therefore, if sons then, we are also heirs of God, co-heirs with Christ. Amen? And he is the high priest. And therefore, we are part of the royal high priest. We are part of the royal divine high priest of Jesus Christ. Amen? So these are the things that, uh, this is who Christ is. And these are also who we are. Amen. We are the righteousness of God. We, we have life eternal. We are the chosen one, the glorious one. We are son of God. We are heir of God. We are priest of God. Amen. 
Okay, so who, who am I in Christ? Um, then what about he, what has what has he done for us? You know, we share in his work, his his uh, his accomplishment for us on the cross, his death and his resurrection. And because he died for us on the cross, he died on the cross for us as us on the cross. Therefore, we we are redeemed by his blood. He has purchased us. We are forgiven, and we are justified. That means we is just as if. We have not seen justified. That means we are declared righteous. When we are declared righteous, it, it just simply means we are justified. And then we have peace with God huh? because, of, because the anger of God on sin in our lives and in the world has been put on Jesus. Therefore, there we have peace with God and there's no condemnation now. Amen. And be, not just no condemnation, not just peace of God. Now, favored by God, uh, we 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 enjoy His favor. He looks at us uh, with with favor. He looks at us uh, very glad to have us with Him. Okay, there's favor. We have the favor of God, and then we, the Scripture tells us we died with Christ, and therefore we are also raised in Christ. So it's not just. Uh, mm -hmm. Spiritually, we, we have risen again, but there will come a day when we will be physically uh, uh, raised with him. Okay. And then what are we raised for? What are we raised for in Christ is to walk in the newness of life. Therefore, that's why in church we talk we, that's why one of our uh, chips, uh, one of our core values is that supernatural because we need to remind ourselves that we are walking, we are we have we can now walk in the newness of life. In the life of Jesus, in the divine, in a in a supernatural way, uh, um, far beyond what uh, we can, we are capable of naturally. Raised to walk in the newness of life, and not just that. What He has done for us is He continues to conform us to His image. We may be one one hardened person here, but He's slowly changing us to be to to conform to His image. And. We are raised with Christ so that now we are seated with Him in the heavenly places. Okay, there, there, there are scriptures to support all this, but I thought I won't, I won't go into all this. And, and if you join Discovery One class, uh, most of this will be covered there too. Amen? So then, the other thing that we need to look at is now we look at we in Christ, uh, I in Christ, or you in Christ. Now, when, what about Christ in me? Uh, is Christ in us in the center of life? How what why is why is it important to have Christ to, to have Christ in the center? Okay, there are two, two scriptures that I want us to just quickly look at. Uh, Paul in Galatians 2:20 says this: I have been crucified with Christ, I no longer live. Can you tell yourself, I no longer live? But who lives in me? But Christ lives in me. Amen. We no longer live. We have died with him. Now he lives in me. Okay? And Paul goes on to say, the life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You know, so the life that we are living now, why is it important to know, to have Christ in the center of us all? It's because the very life that we have now is his. He's living in us. And we better allow him to live in us and through us all the way, okay? So that one part, huh? presently, at present, the life that you now live in your body, you live by faith in the Son of God. He is living in you. Amen? The other words, I think we, 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 we have quoted this earlier, but just to bring it back again, to them, to the church, huh? God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. With Christ in us, there is the hope of glory in the future. So in the present, he lives in me. Right? I no longer live. He lives in me. And because he's in me, I hope have hope for the future. A hope of we have hope of glory for the future. What a glorious hope that is, right? And it is and, and already, you know. Paul raised it, the glorious riches of this mystery. It's such a rich future that we have, such a glorious future that we have with Christ in us. 
and we and we know that the the word hope uh, in 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 the Bible in the uh, simply means uh, the certain the sure expectation of good happening in our lives, amen. Okay, because, and if you understand this, then you you want to know. You then you say, yeah, that's why I want Jesus to be. I want Jesus or Christ to be in the center of my life, amen. Okay, so what makes a Christ center life? What makes a Christ center life? Uh, we have. I just want to give you some words, uh, uh, to to help us to think through some of these things. Well, what what does it mean to have a Christ center life? That means the source of all that we are, the source of everything that we are is is, is Jesus. Okay, uh, he he recreated us uh, when we we trust in him. We are a new creation, and therefore he owns us. He has gifted us with his. Uh, different gifts of the spirit, and he has blessed us abundantly. You know, the, and we need to recognize that all that we are, the very life that we are living now, is his. You know, so he's the source of our life. He's the source of all that we have now in our lives. Uh, I know that you know it, it's something that ah uh, yeah, what's the difference, Pastor? But you know, we we need to come to that. To if you want Jesus to be in the center of your life, you need to continually remind yourself that. He's, he's the source of all that we are. And the motive, he's also the motivation of all that we do. All the thing we say or do. You know, and, and it's not easy. Okay. I'm just putting, I'm putting it down, but I'm also learning this. And how do how how can Jesus be the motivation of everything that we think, say, or do? Uh, it is sometimes, sometimes we are so caught up with our own own agendas, we caught, caught up with our own uh what we want to do and so on. But really. If Christ is to be center of our lives, then He needs to be the motivation, and therefore, to to be motivated by Him, we need to know Him intimately. Intimately, uh, how do we know that? We need to read His Word. We need to spend time with Him. We need to think His thoughts. You know, we need to participate in what He's doing in the world today. If we don't participate in what He's doing, whether in in your CG, in the church, or in the missions or whatever, then then how do you know Him? How can He be the motivation? You know. And the whole motivation is also to please him and to be like him. And he's helping us to, to, to in that too. Huh? Okay, then the other thing is the goal. Uh, the ultimate goal is that we want Jesus to be glorified. The ultimate goal is not that so, so become famous, not to become rich, not to become, you know, secure or anything like that. The ultimate goal that of our life should be that Jesus be glorified in our lives. Amen. So all our other personal goals are to be aligned of this goal, to, 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 to be aligned to this goal of glorifying Jesus. He said, Pastor, say very easy, do very hard. But we have to start somewhere. Ah. Ah, we have to start somewhere. Okay. And so we but we need to know first. Ah, we need to also declare this is what we want to do. And so we begin over time again okay, to allow the Lord to teach us and lead us into this. Okay. And then hope. Ah, uh, our hope. For here and now and the future is in Jesus alone. Okay. So uh it is not whether we change government that will give us a better life, or whether the economy or the world improve, therefore we will be better off. No. Our hope for here and now and also in the future, in the in the life to come, you know, is in Christ alone. Okay. But they said, Pastor, what can I do to be Christ centered? What can I do? You said talk about all this. Uh you talk about all this, uh uh, the source it must be Jesus. Your motivation must be go must be Jesus. Uh, hope must be Jesus. But what can I do? What can I do? Uh, okay. So um, I, I say, first of all, we need to aspire. We need to know that we are not there yet, but we want to be there. We aspire to be there. We want to be there. We 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 aim to be there. We we we, we want to work towards being there. Uh, to be Christ centered. You know, the, the Bible tells us that Jesus is the radiance of God's glory and the exact, and the exact representation of his, of his being. You know, we are all created in God's image, but then sin matters, okay? And therefore, we, we, we no longer have God's image, okay? Uh, but, you know, the Bible tells us that if we uh, begin to focus on Jesus, you know, and think, contemplate the, the Lord's glory, as we begin to think about how glorious he is, how wonderful he is, how beautiful he is, 
how gracious he is, how loving he is, we will slowly be transformed into his image with ever increasing glory. Okay, so we can as in aspire uh, to be like Jesus, and therefore, then he being when we are more and more like him, that he will be more and more center centered in our lives. Amen. The the other thing is that we we need to depend. Uh, uh, as I said earlier, when we look to Jesus as our perfect model in the process, he's perfecting us to be like him. And then we, we realize also that we cannot do it ourselves, but we need and cannot depend on our own works. You cannot say, oh, because today, if I fast a bit more, I mean, not, nothing wrong with us, oh, I pray a lot, spend a lot of time reading the Bible, or pray a lot, or whatever it is, you know, then, 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 then we, uh, maybe we can get nearer there. No, we cannot depend on 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 our own works. We, we just need to depend on what he has already done. He has, he has completed the work for us on the cross and what he continues to do in us. Amen? Then we need to hope. Uh, um, you know, there is always a positive feeling when you have good, when you have hope. You, know? you need to hope. You need to hope that, you know, that God is doing something and God's promises for us will be fulfilled is being fulfilled and will be fulfilled uh, in time to come, in his timing. And this is what we, we, we need to have. You know, the Christian life is all about hope, knowing that God has promises and hoping and looking forward to the time when his promises will be fulfilled for, for us. Amen? And so, and we know for all the promises of God, in him are yes and in him, amen. So, but before all this, before we even go, go anywhere, uh, we, we need also to learn to praise Him. Now, you know? So as we share in the benefit, as we begin to experience more and more with the benefits of His victory over sin and death in our lives and in general, uh, uh, then what we have experienced, what we have received, should stir us uh, to want to worship Him, uh, to, to praise Him, uh, and to declare the truth that He, he alone deserves all the worship. Okay, so you ask me, uh, what can I do to be Christ-centered? You start by wanting to be, huh? aspiring to be. Then you, then you, you know that you cannot do it yourself. Huh? That you, you, you just depend on what He's doing. And if He may ask you to do some things, then you just depend on His leading to do what. It may look silly, it may sound silly, but never tell us, you know, the Lord. Once you hear Him correctly. It was something as you depend on him, something good will come out. And we hope, we hope to know that one day, you know, don't give up hope. One day we will be like him, and one day he will truly be the center of life. But before all this happens, we need to learn to praise him always. Okay. Uh, so therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the gift of our lip, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. So being Christ-centered begins with the realization we are not there yet. It also means that we firmly believe that Jesus has secured a future for us, that not for us that not only we are with him, but also we can be like him. Amen? We will be like him. And then we while we humbly depend on him alone to do this good work, uh, we also hope confidently. Uh, ayah, not yet, ayah. No, not like that. Be confident. God is doing something good and you continue to do something. Uh, continue the good work. It, it is your whole, whole mental, emotional, spiritual attitude towards it. Uh, okay, so the, we, 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 we always need to learn to praise, give thanks and praise. And, and that's the beginning of good things happening. Okay, the one good, good way to become Christ-centered is learn to praise Him. Because the more you praise him, the more you look at how beautiful he is, the more you are conformed, you are transformed to be conformed to his image from glory to glory. Amen? Okay. Uh, but you know, sometimes we can slip into self-centeredness. And I thought I want to just address this also. You know, we talk about being Christ-centered. But just what are some of the signs that sometimes... Uh, that shows us that we are slipping the self-centeredness. So obviously the first thing is when we have no time or space for things of God. 
You know, so often we say that, you know, yeah, we want Jesus is the is our Lord, or Jesus is our King, He's the King of Kings, but we have no time for Him, you know, no space for Him in our lives. Our lives are packed with so many things. We've got children to look after, we've got our uh, work to, to, to finish, we've got housework to, to, to prepare, you know, and all sorts of things. There's no time. Or sometimes we've got Sunday school lessons to prepare, we've got sermons to prepare, but no time for Him. Uh, so, so when we have no time for Him, so the wicked man does not seek him. In all, in all his thoughts, there is no room for God. I trust that this will not happen to us. Okay? But I, I want to put it down so that we, as a reminder that we must always find time and give space for the things of God in our lives. What is another one? And that, another one is when we get worried and upset over small things. You know, uh, Jesus visited the home of Mary and Martha. Uh, and, and Martha was busy about everything else. Mary was there sitting at Jesus' feet. And so Martha got very angry. He said, Lord, don't you care? You know, that my sister not helping me. Lord, Lord, have you not been asked her to help me? You know? So what did Jesus say? Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen the good part. We should not be taken from her. You see, uh, some, can you imagine? Where was Jesus? Jesus was next to her. But she was concerned about everything. Not just concerned about everything, also concerned that her sister not helping her. You know, And we can be like that sometimes. You know, That we, we don't see the big picture. Is Jesus in this place? Is Jesus working something here? Can I be part of it? Maybe the children are a little bit noisy. It's okay. Jesus is working something now. Or maybe, maybe, Maybe the, the, the electricity blacked out and we can't hear anything, can't see anything. But Jesus is doing something here. Right? So are we concerned? I mean, I'm not saying that we don't do things well. We do things well, okay? Uh, we, we need to have that spirit of excellence and so on. But we must not be worried and troubled with so many little, little things and allow these little, little things to rob us of seeing the, the totality of God's glory and what He's doing in our midst, and to, to, to blind us from seeing what He wants to achieve in our lives and the lives of people around us. You say, Pastor, it won't happen to me. Hey, it happened to Mother. Lah. So be careful. Huh? Jesus was next to her, and this is what she told Jesus. Okay? And this is what Jesus told her. Okay? So one thing is needful. Mary has chosen the good part. Choose the good part, okay? Choose what? Choose the good part. To see what the Lord is doing, to be with Him, doing the same things that He is doing. Amen? Or listening to Him, teaching you. Okay, so this one. Uh, next one is um, when we become bitter in relationships. And that, that when we become bitter, when we get angry with people, when we when small, small things, angry, and then you become more and more angry, uh, more and more bitter, then... This, this sort of things so rob us of, of the joy of the Lord. You know, we have not come to this. Uh, Acts 8 in two, yeah, two more weeks, you'll probably come to that. Huh? You know, this, there is uh, Simon the sorcerer. He saw, he saw people, uh, saw the apostles, you know, uh, saw uh, Peter, saw uh, uh, Praying for people, people being well, people receiving the Holy Spirit, and so on and so on. So he gave money to the apostles, hoping to bribe them. So Peter said, you know, may your money perish with you because you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. You have no, no part or share in this ministry because your heart is not right with God. Why is his heart not right with God? Because I see that you are full of bitterness and captive to sin. So we can become sometimes bitter in relationship because of the past that we experienced uh, because of, you know, we, 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 we don't know how to live and let go, you know. People hurt us. Yeah, you, 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 not that you don't remember, you remember, you learn from it, but you let go. You don't hold it against people. Yeah, and so it's something that we all need to learn, huh? not to allow our hearts to be bitter. Huh? Uh, that's what Peter said. Huh? And, and, and sometimes we can be like this. And because of this, then we 
then when once you get bitter with relationship, then then you forget who Jesus is, where Jesus is. All you care is uh, this fellow no good, the fellow no good, the fellow no good, the fellow no good, the fellow hurt me, the fellow you cheated me, this all you know, and all these sort of things. And and that's not right. Uh, that that means we that will move us from being Christ-centered, moving towards being Christ-centered to be becoming more and more self-centered. The the other one is. We say we don't do it, lah. But even even Peter the apostle did it, lah. When we boast of ourselves over others, you know Jesus again. You know Jesus was there. You now Jesus said, tonight, you know, you all fall away, you know, because it's written you strike the shepherd, the sheep will all be scattered. And so what did Peter say? <laughs> even all fall away, I never will. He said, hey, I don't do this sort of thing. Hey, whatever you say, if you say you don't do that, better watch out. Okay? <laughs> better watch out. Okay? Because Peter was there with Jesus also. Hey, it was Jesus himself who told him that, warned him that. You know, at least in Mary's, uh, in Martha's case, uh, because after she complained on Jesus, tell her of, uh, but this one already, Jesus warned already. But Peter still said, everyone fall away. La. I never, I'm a big hero. Um, so, so let's learn to Let's learn to appreciate one another. Let's learn to see the Jesus in one another. Rather than say, oh, we, we, this are no good. I'm better in this. Why do you allow this fellow to do this when I can do much better? Or, or something like that. No? Or you just don't look at other people with disdain. No, we don't boast of ourselves over others. Because uh, that means we are drawing, we are becoming more and more self-centered and not Christ-centered. Amen? Because the, 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 the final one is uh, when we trust ourselves more than we trust God, in, it happens. Uh, but the scripture reminds us, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Okay, so uh, what we have done so far is we look at um, we look at ourselves, uh, huh? Being self-centered, uh, being Christ-centered, uh, and now now we're looking at how we don't slip into self-centeredness. Uh, the next part that I want to look at is how how is TNCC, how is our church Christ-centered? Okay. Okay, this one this is just revision. Uh, uh, don't know why I put it two times, but maybe just to remind all of us: don't slip into self-centeredness. Okay. These are the Warning signs that we need to look at. But the next the thing, next part I want to look at is how is TNCC Christ centered? First of all, in our teaching, uh, basically all that we are, all that we do all the time, we always want to talk about the good news of Jesus and his life transforming grace. We, 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 I mean, some, sometimes people say, oh, Pastor, why don't you talk about, you know, uh, um, what do you call? Uh, oh, why don't you do a teaching on how to cast out devils? Or why don't you do a, uh, something on you know uh, the end times or whatever? The, all the conflicting theories or or the relative religions and so on and so on. Okay, there is a place for all these sort of things. But in our church on Sundays and so on, what we want to do is to preach the good news of Jesus. And it's life transforming grace. You understand what I'm trying to say? Uh, there are many things to teach. I know. <laughs> you can teach how to bring up children, how to do it. Okay, there, there are places to do all this. But basically, on our Sunday sermons and, and, and our, our teaching courses on, on, on Wednesday, most of the time, it'll be all about the good news of Jesus and his life transforming grace. Okay. And the other thing is, um, you notice if you have been in our church long now, you notice that we are. Teach the indicative first, then the imperative. These are words we learned when we first started this whole journey on grace. Uh, what is the indicative? The indicative is simply this. The, who are you in Christ? What Jesus has done. Uh, who are you? You know What Jesus has done and who are you in Christ? So it is it's all about Jesus. Who are we are in Christ? We, we talk about our present position in Christ first, rather than what we want to do. Uh, whereas if you come from some other churches, a lot of times people focus on the imperative, imperative first. That means imperative means what you must do. You must do this. You must do this. You know. You know. So um, what 
what in our church, what a lot of times when we preach and we, what we do is we, we talk about indicative first. That's why this morning, uh, this, this evening in our lesson, we started about who are we in Christ, the Christ in you, you know, and, and this was indicative first. And then before we talk about what you can do, and even the what you can do, you realize that uh, we don't really emphasize so much on it because it's all about Jesus working his good work in our lives, right? So the imperative, of course, if you read the epistles of Paul, you realize that he, the first part, he talk about, you know, uh, efficient, he talk about, you know, how he has chosen us and how he blesses every spiritual blessing in, in heaven and so on and so on, so on, before he tells you what to do next, right? The imperative comes after you know who you are and what the Lord has done for you. Amen? And that's how, that's what, what we do in our church. Huh? Then you also will realize that in, in worship, uh, this is our tagline for a long, long time. Uh, since we started, we are always celebrating Jesus' finished work on the cross. Okay? We want to celebrate Jesus' finished work on the cross. And um, sometimes it slip a bit, but most of the time, we, we actually focus on this. Uh, we actually talk about this, uh, sing about this, and so on. Our songs are all about celebrating Jesus in different, different ways. Uh, we, we may not have the exact words there, but the whole idea behind the songs we sing will be on celebrating Jesus' finished work. It's all about our praise upward to Him and not inward of us. You know, uh, there are many songs around and many churches also do that, that they, they, they sing about, oh, you know, oh, yo, I'm so lost and so this and that. I'm so, so, you know, and talk about your, your condition rather than what Jesus has done for us. Right? So in our worship, uh, same thing. It's all about worship upward to Him, and not not talking about how 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 poor we are, how how miserable we are, how you know how desolate we are, and so on and so on. It's all about celebrating Jesus' finished work. Because because of Jesus' finished work, then you're no longer poor. Because of Jesus' finished work, you're no longer heavy laden. Because of Jesus' finished work, you 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 have uh, you have a um, you 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 have a destiny to to look forward to. Amen. And, and then, so therefore we sing about that, right? Of course, sometimes some parts of the song may come and say, okay, where we were until Christ led us. But most of the time, uh, I think the worship teams uh, know about this. And we, we sometimes, if, if they make a mistake, we tell them, but then, uh, then they will change. Uh. So most of the time, this, this is what we will do in our worship. Okay? Then we also, in our church, we also have a, what we call a kingdom mentality. Uh, we want to maintain unity and respect diversity within the church. Uh, uh, I trust that this, this is something that we all, we, we all are different people. We all come from different backgrounds, different, we have different points in our spiritual journey. But so, but we are all together because of Jesus. So we want to maintain our unity. And sometimes we respect the diversity. Say within our church, some people are more, what I say, more charismatic than others. Some people are more, you know, word-centered than others, but we respect the different diversity of thoughts that we have. And sometimes we not, may not agree on everything 101%. No, we can we can allow for certain disagreement which does not affect our, our core beliefs. Yeah, uh, Because some some things we, we all don't know. And that, that carries on also in our relationship with other churches and other places. We don't go around telling people, hey, you're wrong here, you're wrong, we don't agree. No. I mean, 95% of the time we can agree one another there. And if we can influence them uh, quietly, subtly, then, then we want somebody into, uh, into seeing the grace of God the way we see, isn't it? Huh? So uh, we, we just want to be on Jesus' side. Huh? That's why we are also members of the NECF, and wherever we can, we, we want to be part of different things that people are doing. They may not all agree with us. Of course, sometimes they don't even invite us in. Uh, okay, that's that's their privilege, that's their, their decision. Okay, but we want to have a kingdom perspective, and that's why uh, when it comes to missions and so on, where we can cooperate with people, we want to cooperate. And that's why when when I met this uh this Edward David, uh, this this guy, a Malaysian who is who is head of uh now running the ship, uh, uh Logos 
Logos Hope, uh, uh, going to Middle East and so on. So I know he, uh, some of theology and all this, we don't agree. But I want to be on Jesus' side because Jesus, he is also doing work, spreading the gospel to the nations that I myself would never go. Uh, he's going to Lebanon. He's going to uh, Somalia. <laughs> I don't want to go there. I said, let them go there. But he's there. The ship is there. And then and in their own, own way, you know, representing Jesus there. So, and Jesus is definitely on his side because he's doing his part of spreading the good news to the nations. And so we want to be on Jesus' side. So we want to have kingdom uh, perspective. Uh, so I hope you understand this part. Uh, we are not trying to form an exclusive uh, grace-based church. Yeah, we, we have connections and relationships with grace-based church, but we are also open uh, to, to, to being with other churches and so on, uh, where, we, 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 where we can agree with 90, 90 95% of what they are teaching. Uh, they can agree with us, actually. Uh, if they want us in, we, if they want us in, we, we, we will definitely want to be part of it. Okay? Um, so that part, okay. Uh, uh, then scripture, uh, we, we, scripture is an important part of our church. Uh, uh, important part all these years. Um, you see, because Jesus himself said, uh, I think it's John 14 or something, uh, if you abide in me, my word abide in you. Right? Uh, he said that. Is it John 14, John 15? Uh, so if you abide in me, so to abide in Jesus, that means his word abides in us. So that means if we are in Christ, then his word must be in us. And so scripture becomes an important part of us. Right? It's not an option. No, and not just part of the scriptures, the few verses you learn here and there, but the whole scripture. And that's why that's why I'm I know some of you stop stop reading, following me in the what already, but I'm still asking you uh, to continue to listen into the scripture because we are going through the whole Bible, okay? Uh, and 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 it's it's a challenge that day after day to 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 come up with notes for it and to see it from a, a new covenant perspective and so on. But that's what it means. Uh, the more we read, the more his word abide in us. And the more his word abide in us, the more we abide in him, right? And 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 as a church we, we believe in the authority of the scriptures. Okay? Uh, the scripture is authoritative for all matters of faith and, and life, life, uh, life in the Lord. Okay? The scripture is important. Okay? And so and, and we trust in the authority of scripture. And we also depend on its truth. If the Bible tells us in Christ you are blessed, then we are blessed. Lah. We trust in the truth that, that that truth will come forth for us. Lah. Amen. If you say, uh, by his stripes you are healed, no? then we want to stand on that truth uh, and depend on that truth that we are the healed in Christ Jesus. Amen? That on the cross he bore all our infirmities and diseases. That we don't need to be, we, we can be healthy. I always say this, uh, we can walk in his divine health. Uh, the healing is as an evangelistic tool to bring people into the kingdom. I mean, just bringing all these different examples, what, what does it mean by to depend on his truth in our daily lives? If we say he's coming again, he's coming again. And we need to, we need to know and look forward and expect that. Amen? Okay, so in teaching, in worship, in kingdom mentality, in scripture, I think the other one in life's philosophy. So what is it for us? I mean, how do we look at life? You know, we know that we know that uh, when Christ is in us, uh, it means that uh, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me, right? So if Christ is living in me, his life is abundant, isn't it? So we want to be living his abundant life. Amen? And that's what it also means about depending on the truth of the scripture. Living our lives is depending on truth. So therefore, we want to live, live our lives supernaturally. We don't have to be always uh, weighed down by what is natural. You know, the Lord in different ways has been showing us you know, how uh, sometimes we think supernatural means uh, some big time miracle. No, small, small things He's showing us that our lives can be supernatural. Amen? 
And we also, in the end, we want to be a community transformed by His grace. And this, this, this is something that, uh, this is part of our uh, vision our vision statement, what we want to see forward. We are not there yet. Here we have many rough corners. Um, yeah, I mean, diff in different ways, uh, we still are not a community of grace. Sometimes we, we are not gracious to one another. Sometimes the leaders are not gracious to the people. Sometimes the people are not gracious to the leaders. You know, So, so we, we still need to learn that how to be transformed, to be a community that's truly really transformed because we experience God's grace, then we want to be gracious to everyone around us. We want to show His grace to everybody around us. We want His grace to flow through us to people around us. And that's something that we are slowly, slowly uh, going, uh, trying to. We still, we, we, we uh, as the more something, the more we want to say this, the more sometimes certain things happen that show us not to be a community of grace. You know, and, and that's what that's sometimes that's painful, okay? But nevertheless, we hope because we know that in Christ, you know, He will work all things out for our good, amen. He will work things out all together for our good, amen. Okay, so uh, I just yeah, I will close in one a minute or two, two time. Huh? Um, so just to put it all together, so we started by saying, You in Christ. Uh, what does it mean for us to be in Christ? Uh, we share in His person, we share in His work, uh, we share in all that Christ, who Christ is, and and His work, and then Christ in us, that He's the source of our life, the life that we now live. Uh, we, we we live in the, the life that we now live in the body. We live by faith in the one who loved me and gave Himself for me. Uh, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in us. That at the same time. That's for our present. Then we also have this hope of glory, that Christ in us, the hope of glory. And so we need to hold these two together. And then it, it begins that the good work in our lives, are, it's, I, there's nothing you can really do to make Christ the center of your life. It's the Lord's doing, but it, you need to do change your mindset, you change your way of thinking and, and, and begin to know this. And so that in the, then he truly will become the center. And we need to aspire towards it. We need to, you know, uh, depend on him to do this. So we need to hope and we need to continue to praise him that he is doing this good work in our lives. Amen. I know I'm, I'm not answered a lot of your questions, but I intentionally wanted it to be this way, talking about concepts then, rather than, uh, okay, you spend one hour reading a Bible today. Uh, <laughs> no. I, I'd rather not give you this, but to say that, you know, if you understand this, how how Christ in us is his life in us and his um, in the hope of glory in us and who we are in Christ. If you know all this, then we will see how important it is to allow Christ and to make Christ, to want Christ to be in the center of our lives in our church. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to stop here. Uh, pass it back to Lynn. Huh? Hang on. Huh? I stop sharing this. Thanks, Pastor Peter. Yeah, for the sharing. Indeed, I, I'm sure yeah, we have all learned yeah, how to be Christ centered in our walk with Him. Yeah. So, anyway, um, yeah, um, you can turn on your cameras just to say hi to everyone. Yeah, thanks for attending this week's um, seminar. Yeah, so um, just in case you have missed our announcement, right? A quick one. Let me share my screen. Okay.